All right, so now we're gonna be reading for Capricorn. Capricorns. What do y'all need to hear for March? One, two, oh, see? Okay. Oh, okay. Part of me, I'm like, I mean, I wanna be transparent and honest. I'm like, do I need to do another shuffle? But I'm like, you know what? And I ask them really quick and they're like, no. Uh, sometimes they're like, yeah, yeah, boom. Yeah, you yeah, need to, but I just want to be transparent there. So anyways, Capricorn, what does March have in store for you? So we have joy, communication, ego, spirit, time. All right, y'all. So beautiful, powerful, earthly Capricorn. March is going to be a time for you to make joy, to make happiness the priority, okay? Now, it's also going to be up to you. This is where it gets hard, where it may be difficult for you to have that conversation, to get real with the self about how you have been standing in your own way of receiving that. Because it, there's this feeling where it's like, oh, shoot, like, I can't be happy. Like, I can be happy, but I can't be happy too much. There's more that I need to do. Like, I can't just pause and receive this. I can't just pause and give myself permission to receive, release, to experience, to give. I have to keep moving. I have to keep doing. I have to keep learning, etc. What is the point of creating goals or visions of what you desire if you aren't going to give yourself the permission to experience it and I, i'm sorry if i say that like very you know harshly that's i should that's one of my guides girl speaking like she's very to the point direct and a little bit tough love um but that's what they want you to hear for the month of march um, this is me speaking. If we think about like numer the, in the concept of like numerology, right? Like March is the third month of the Gregorian calendar. If you follow the Gregorian calendar, three, if you also are familiar with the tarot, um, the major arcana, uh, the third card is the Empress. And what does the Empress represent? The Empress is associated with like Venusian energy. It is, for me, I think of, when I think of the Empress, I think about like self-acceptance, right? It's the, we've learned in the high priestess that we have everything. I mean, this is very, very basic interpret uh, definitions, okay? Because for time's sake. But in the high priestess, we learn that the power that we seek outside of ourselves has been within ourselves all of the time. And so rather than look externally, we go within, so we're working with our internal bodies, our intuition, with spirit, our knowing, the tools that we have that reside within ourselves, right? And when we do that, we reach, we break free from chains, ch break free from chains that we placed of, uh, on ourselves that may tell us that we don't know enough, right? So when we move through um, the lesson, the embodiment, of the high priestess and into the empress the empress the empress is like that unapologetic like this is me i have everything that i need i'm gonna do me i'm gonna i'm gonna do what i need for myself i'm gonna trust in myself and my power and that is how we can experience pleasure like there's no shame the, the simplest way i want to put it right now is like there's no shame in my game when i am embodying the empress i don't care like I do what I need to to, provo to promote and experience pleasure, whether that pleasure be something that's internal, external, whether it be emotional, mental, physical. And I give myself the, the permission to experience, right? Like that's one aspect, one, one part of like how for me the Empress can show up or at least what I'm feeling called to share with y'all today. So for you, Capricorn, we can combine that with this third month of the year, March, okay? That if joy is to be your utmost priority, what does that mean for you? What is what does joy, pleasure, happiness look like for you? And how are you or have you been embodying the Empress? How are you criticizing yourself, shaming yourself for experiencing those very things? How do you limit yourself 
like your love meter or your pleasure meter of like, okay, I can experience joy and pleasure, but only so much, right? And again, I want to be, um, I want to acknowledge the fact that like a lot of these patterns, like for me, I'm going to give myself as an example. I've noticed that when I am in resistance to embodying the energy or archetype of the empress, it is related to trauma, okay? And so I want to hold space for those. This isn't to say like, oh, if you are not allowing yourself to experience X, Y, and Z, tisk tisk on you. No, because it's far more complex than that because we all have different lived experiences and are living different lives. And a lot of our blocks, um, limiting narratives and beliefs stem from trauma. And so it's not going to be as easy as like one two three so give yourself the space give yourself the permission to take as much time as you need at a pace that feels supportive for you because again it's like why do digging work if we're not in a emotional mental state to do energetic state to do so because we're only to create and cause more harm against the self this is going to take time they're saying that this is Though this is going to be like the, 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 um, the, they're saying heavy theme this month for you. This is something that's going to, this is huge for you throughout this year. It's something that you want to keep at the back of your mind or at least not a back of the mind. He's saying, no, not the back of the mind. Get it right. Um, they're, they're tough love sometimes on me too. They're showing like a brick and it being laid, uh, paved into, um, like a foundation. It's like understanding why you may not place joy or the emotional experience of joy and pleasure in the forefront of your lived experience is going to be key to solidifying and building the, your foundation within this life, or at least within this phase of your journey. All right, my loves. Sorry if I was a little heavy there, a little harsh. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, I'm saying that aspect because my um, one of my other guides, uh, I feel like sometimes I'm like, did they get that for me? The sorry, not sorry, because I just heard him say, sorry, not sorry. Um, anywho. All right. So now we're going to go into Aquarius. What do y'all need to hear? I don't know if y'all can hear my, um, my sweet little Stella uh, snoring right now. You heard that that was her stella's a cub she's 15 years old she's a capricorn okay all right aquarius is what do i you we need to hear for the month of march We have hidden messages, let it go, movement, remember, duality, death. All right. So Aquarius, the month of March. The month of March feels like it is, oh my gosh, that's so gross. Okay, they're showing me, I'm going to share the visual and then I'm going to share with you the energetics, the emotions that I'm feeling behind it. So the month of March, they're showing... Mm. what looks like a volcano erupting and then it looks like an you know content warning this is going to be like if you're not into like dr pimple type stuff you might want to skip forward a couple seconds um but they're showing like a volcano erupting and then they're also showing like a pimple like about to burst or like a boil about to burst sorry i know that's so gross but that's what they're showing me um so now with the energetics, which I'm sure you're probably like, oof, okay, just on that visual alone, we can get a sense of like what that may, what this month may bring for us. So the beginning of March feels as though there's going to be like news that we receive that kind of may, perhaps may like stir up. It's either like what it feels like it's, oh my gosh, they're speaking so quickly. I'm just going to, hold on. 
beginning of March for Aquarius, it feels as though something within ourselves, within the self, emotionally, whether it be like a wound, um, a limiting narrative, a sh you know, anything that you did within shadow work, um, may come up to the surface, right? And you're being asked to meet that head on and whatever frustration, whatever pain, whatever, it's like the ghost of the feeling. They want to remind you that like whatever resurfaces at the beginning of the month is not factual, meaning the experience is fact is, is can be based on fact. The emotion is valid, okay, and it can be based on fact. However, it is residual or like a ghost pain, if you will. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced like in like injuries and you have like and it's healed, but it, you all you still get like ooh that like like a, a pain there, like a ghost pain, like um yeah I don't know like some like I've, I've hurt myself a lot growing up like dislocated my shoulder broke my ankle my elbow and though they're healed sometimes I will have like a ghost pain of it right like I'm like oh that feels or not even in areas where I did hurt myself I just get like this weird sensation anyway what may be coming up what may resurface is not an indication of what needs to be readdressed and like redug up and like peel back more and more layers it's more of understanding that where you are in this moment okay and what comes up to the surface is a reminder of how you need to continue to move forward okay it is a reminder that it's an invitation for you to give yourself the permission to change it very much feels as though there is this like feeling in the body in the in this and in the subconscious and the mental body of like this i'm i've i'm outdated like i've outgrown myself i've outgrown where i'm at within myself i've outgrown even perhaps like a friend circle or you know this position within a career or even perhaps like a relationship right that isn't like it may mean yeah that it's time to move on to something different or it may mean that and like and then you walk away like that chapter's ended no longer have that circle of friends that partnership that position in the career or working at that place um or career field but it may or it may mean that okay there i need to pivot something within this needs to shift and so how have you been living within the shadows of what you've outgrown okay and if you find yourself feeling shame or self-criticism for like they're showing like a frog like leaping back and forth uh between like um like jumping from one lily pad to another lily pad to another lily pad like just between the same two like back and forth back and forth back and forth that doesn't mean that you're indecisive and it doesn't mean that you don't know who you are. It doesn't mean that you don't know what you want. It just means that you are an individual who has many likes, many, many desires, many friend groups, whatever it may be. And it's not about finding the right one, finding the right thing. It's about finding what's supportive for you in that moment and moving in rhythm with that. There are some things that need to be readjusted within the way like the perception our individualistic perception of the life we feel we need to live or that we placed on ourselves because sometimes we when we outgrow our you know versions of ourselves that is partially due because we are evolving right and which means that when we evolve our desires may also evolve or our desire has evolved and then we have evolved alongside that desire and we can feel a way, right? Like when change occurs, we can feel grief over or feel a way of, you know, I placed this label on myself. I placed myself within this career. I play, I once said I wanted this within a partnership or I, you know, wanted this within friendships, whatever it may be. And then as you evolve, as we evolve and change, we find that everything around us needs to shift as well, right? It's like when folks go through like their spiritual awakenings, um, we find that, uh, you know, our 
morals may shift, our um, beliefs may shift, our ideas may shift, which also means that everything else will as well because we energetically no longer feel supported by those things. And so what they're trying to say here, and I want to kind of wrap this up, what they're trying to say here is to give yourself the space to be that thing. It doesn't make you phony. It doesn't make you a chameleon. It makes you in right relation with living in unison, in flow, in rhythm with who you are as a person. And if you are feeling triggered or activated in the beginning of the month, specifically in the beginning of the month of like, who am I? What am I doing? I'm feeling frustrated. Like I'm a failure, whatever it may be, or just like irritated or feeling really tender. That may be a cue or clue into what you've actually been resisting the most, what you've been grieving over the most. And so how we can resolve that, or at least how we can kind of mend that is to relinquish our control or our hold that we have placed on that and needing to stay with us because it was once part of us. I hope that that makes sense. Um, it kind of makes me think of like, it kind of makes me think of, you know, when we, anyway, no, I'm not going to even share that. Okay. Um, so I hope that that message is supportive. I know that that may seem or may feel a little bit confusing because I'm a little bit like, hmm, I wonder. Um, but again, um, March feels as though something's going to kind of like burst open and it may feel very uncomfortable, but know that it's because it is bringing you closer to what you want in your life, at least for within this part of your life right now. And the closure endings do need to take place. And so if you're feeling activated or triggered by something that has resurfaced, use that activation or emotion that comes up with what's resurfaced as a clue to what you need to be reminded of what you actually truly desire all right like dang i'm hearing that and i'm like okay let's see what let's see what's gonna happen all right my love so now we have our final message for beautiful pisces oh fern my little kitty, um, Fern. She be hooking on my like arm and my side of my butt right now. I'm like, chill out, boo. Dios mio. Um, okay, so Pisces. What do y'all beautiful, beautiful BBs need to hear? What does this month of March have in store for y'all? Let's see. I'm giggling because this card just keeps coming up. One more. Oh, okay. All right. So we have Pisces. <gasps> okay. So Pisces, we have fear, ego. That's the card that keeps coming up. Air, earth, vulnerability, and create. All right, my loves. So for Pisces, this month for you, March, you're going to you're being asked to face to face get get connected with your emotional body, okay? Really connect with what is it that you are fearing? So let's also think of fear as an umbrella term. What do you associate with fear? Are you feeling fear? Are you feeling sadness? Are you feeling um discouraged? Are you feeling 
disconnected what is it that you are feeling at this time because we need to gain clarity over what that is because your feelings are valid however they are not fact and we want you to hear this we want you to understand that this thing that you are feeling is standing in the way and it's coming from a place that is not truth that is not truthful to who you are, what is happening around you or what you are deserving of. And we need to move that energy out of your body, out of your mind, out of your subconscious. We need you to connect back into your physical body. We need you to come back into center so that you can open yourself back up to feel safe to open yourself back up to your dreams, your desires, to joy, to happiness, to your life. And then to create, to begin to do, to take action, to live, to live life is what they're saying. Um, this is me speaking now. So there's a sense in the body and kind of like what's being whispered is that um, it feels as though perhaps some time up into this month, or I mean, some of you, it feels like it's been like some months in the making. And for some of you, it feels like it might just be really recent, like in the last month or so, shit, even like in the last week where we feel like this need to like come in come into center like to come in really close and like confine ourselves to like kind of disconnect um go into like hermit mode in a way right but unlike the hermit in um the in the tarot the major arcana we're going into hermit mode because we're being led by the egoic mind of it is not safe for me to share space to share my to share my space to share my heart to share my emotions with those that are around me we when we're when we're embodying the hermit we are turning within we are um not just turning within but we are what is the word we are i can't even think of the word but we are like kind of we for lack of a better term we go within ourselves um we separate from the external world we separate from the material world from the guidance of others and to to learn about who we are to go within so we can discern what is ours what isn't ours what is our truths what isn't our truths and kind of like play the picture or the movie that we've written so far that has everything to do with our lived experience it has everything to do with lessons we've learned with tools we've learned with the journey that we've lived so far we go within we retract within so that we to, again to put it simply to learn right like to to pause on the action that we've taken but they're saying for some of you pisces you've gone into this hermit mode but have not done the the act of learning you're going into hermit mode with the intention to just protect and that's fine right like that's you do you you do what you feel is most supportive for you but it's important that you reflect on get clear on what is leading you what is telling you you know that uh, what is telling you the facts and again your emotions are valid they're real they're yours to experience they're yours that you are experiencing however it's important that we remind ourselves to not get so caught up in the depths and the current of our own internal oceans and that we connect to the our physical bodies. And that might be through breath work, that might be through just moving the body, going for a walk, you know, like tapping, whatever it may be, like, you know, just so we can come back into center so that we are kind of like woken up of, oh, whoa, whoa, okay, okay, okay. That feeling is valid. My, you know, absolutely, but it is not my truth and it is safe for me to be loved by another. It is safe for me to love this person. It is safe for, for me to pursue X, Y, and Z. It is safe for me to live and be present in my own life. And I also want to say that, you know, each, again, each one of us are living very different lives. And so if you find yourself feeling this need to retract and to kind of separate yourself from those that are around you, I'm not here to tell you that you can't do that. I'm not saying that, nor are they. They're just saying to get clear on what is the motive behind that retraction or that need to retract. If you need to do that because you're energetically you're like, I can't handle this. Like there's just too much ish going on. I don't have the bandwidth to, to show up for people, let alone myself. So I'm going to prioritize myself. Beautiful. Do that. 
but there is a difference when you're like when when one says i'm gonna retract and go into hermit mode because i'm feeling overwhelmed and i'm feeling like really discouraged and i feel like i'm failing and i don't know what to do and then we don't connect it with a reasoning behind it so if we're feeling discouraged and frustrated and and we're, we're not associating it with i'm feeling discouraged because of you know a person place or thing or a situation that took place a factual thing that took place and we just are doing it without the intention to give ourselves what we're needing so that we can have the energetic bandwidth to show up for ourselves then we're, we may also be creating more harm because sometimes we may find ourselves retracting again without the intention to show up and support ourselves right that's rooted in to support ourselves rather it's rooted in i'm rooted in avoidance again we may only be causing harm to ourselves again you know you do you i am not here to to shame or judge anything um anyone and feelings are hard Feelings are hard. There's so much going on in the world right now. It's scary. So, you know, it's natural to want to disassociate, to disconnect, to, you know, retreat within because it's overwhelming. But it's also important that we remind ourselves, I can take a day off. I can take a week off. I can turn off the chatter and just but if we do that, that we're showing up for our emotional state, that we're doing the things that will support our nervous system, that will fill our energy back up and that we're not like disassociating, disconnecting to just bury our head into the ground and, and, and to harm ourselves. I hope that that makes sense. All right, my loves, thank you so much. And I hope these messages are, are supportive for you. Um, if you are... Uh, a fan of this deck this is my oracle deck passages it is available in my witch shop which is in the link um in the description and if you enjoy these give them a thumbs up um and you know click that follow button share with a friend and you know as always these messages are you know if they resonate, beautiful. And if they don't, that's beautiful too, you know? Um, and if you would like to work together in a one-on-one -on -one session, um, my books are currently on pause, but you can sign up for my newsletter where uh, I will be announcing. That's usually where, that's where I announce first. Well, between Patreon and my newsletters are where I announce um, when my books are open. And yeah, thank y'all. Bye.